If you're like me, you've got contacts in every single possible format. Email, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And it's becoming harder and harder to stay on top of them. To help me make sense of this mess, I use Smarter Contacts, the free app that automatically creates rich profiles for all my contacts right on my smartphone. The thing I love most about this app are the rich profiles it creates. I can see photos, job titles, company details, and updates from social networks all in one place, all in context. This is a free app and available on all mobile platforms. Head to www.ontether.tv forward slash smarter to download it today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Untether.tv. I'm your host and the founder, Rob Woodbridge. This is that place where we dive into long-form conversations around the mobile industry. We sit down with the entrepreneurs who are changing the way we do business, the way that we buy, the way that we shop, the way that we share. Today, the way that we actually communicate, exchange, get in touch with, contact people in our social circles. It's a pretty amazing thing to think about that, you know, two years ago, a lot of this that we're talking about today didn't exist. The way that we communicated with people was still old school, you know, nine digits or 10 digits on a phone number and that was it. And uh, today there's so many different ways to stay in touch with people. And we got one of these companies in, uh, well, on the show right now. Paint a little picture for you. We probably use every social network available to us. You do, I do, I use Twitter, I use LinkedIn, I use Facebook, I, I use Instagram, I use all of these environments that all tag my location, but they're all so disjointed and, and the world needs a unified source of social engagement. And that is what we're talking about today with Banjo. And I've got the founder and CEO, who's Damien Patton, with us today. Tough day to get his attention because today, or late last night, they launched version 2.0 of Banjo. So I'm very appreciative that, uh, that Damon is, Damien has actually come on and, and uh, without sleep and still wants to come on and talk to you guys and share some, share some of their stories. So Damon, thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me, Rob. I'm glad to be here. So what are you looking at now? We, we just we did a little bit of a, a pre-interview. What are you looking at right now in front of you, monitors full of what? Um, well, besides looking at you right now, I'm actually... <laughs> Behind behind my computer right now, looking at a, a bank of monitors, and on those monitors, I'm just looking at the, uh, the our server health, uh, all the traffic coming in from around the world, all the downloads happening, the people, what they're doing in the app right now, um, our growth in certain countries, uh, etc. It's it's uh, it's exciting. It's exciting here every day at Banjo, but today especially, the team has worked incredibly hard uh, over the last six weeks building this new version. Um, and today it's paying off very well for everyone here. And so I'm real proud of everybody and uh, real proud of what we accomplished. So the product launched last night, version 2.0 of the software. Originally, you, you've been out since what summer of 2011, right? Uh, yeah, we, we came out in uh, June 22nd, about seven months ago, uh, we launched. Um, and uh, it's been a phenomenal ride since. So we're at a, about 650,000 users uh, when we launched uh, V2.0 la late last night or early this morning. Um, and uh, growing really fast, uh, about o uh, over a hundred thousand users a month before we launched, and um, obviously we're on pace to to beat that handily this month. So things are good. Things are very good. Well, I, you know, I, you, you we cannot go without mentioning the fact that that you're in the middle of a launch, and so thank you for doing this. I really appreciate the fact that you've stuck with this uh, this episode, and and uh, I, I love watching this. We're going to dive a little bit more into the product in in a, in a little while. What banjo is, what it does what it will be, what it will do, all those kind of things. But I really, you know, what, what struck me uh, about when I was doing a little bit of research on you is you, you have this insane background, um, which doesn't really push it into where you are, right? This wasn't probably a linear curve to get to where you are right now. Talk about this. You, you were a NASCAR mechanic? Yeah, I, I was. I've, uh, <laughs> among other things in my life, I spent many, many years as a chief mechanic for one of the top NASCAR teams, um, and had a great time. I mean, it's a it's a fantastic life. Uh, came out of the military after serving a couple of tours of duty in Desert Storm, and, and went into uh, and went into NASCAR. And um, you know, I, I I do miss it a lot. I, I miss auto racing a lot. I miss that excitement a lot. But what's been cool throughout my life, uh, not only from the military and into NASCAR, but I've taken 
that precision and speed that you learn to do when you're in auto racing, uh, people always say, well, if you move fast and you do things too quickly, you make mistakes. But if you want to win, you can't make mistakes. And so you, you, you do that by practice. I mean, in auto racing, we practice, practice, practice. And so now, in engineering is no different. And you can move a lot faster and you can do things and accomplish a lot more if you run things like a, like a top pit crew, whether it's a Formula One racing team or NASCAR. Uh, it's, the principles all apply the same. And so I've applied those here at Banjo, and that's one reason that we're able to move so quickly and, and that we've accomplished so much in a little bit of time with, with uh, originally just me, and, and now we've grown to a really great team. So, yeah, so anyway, so yeah, uh, NASCAR. But but da so Damien, you got a Desert Storm. You did two tours of duty. Two tours. Two tours. Yep. Whereabouts were you? Do, do you talk about this or is it something? No, I, I mean uh, I don't not not talk about it. But um, you know, I was living uh, at home in Hawaii, and it was just about that time I, I turned eighteen, and um, it, it was the right thing to do, and and so I went and. Uh, while I was there um, and serving in the military, I actually fell in love with auto racing, and I just made it my mission that I was going to be involved. And um, you know, I always wanted to be on the pit crew, and I just thought what they did was so amazing. And and I just put myself in a position so uh, that not only did I get there, but I, like I said, I did very well. And and from that, I put myself through college, and um, and then after college, started my own companies. And uh, it's it's been uh, it's been all uphill since then, but all good stuff. Okay, so. You Desert Storm, two tours, come back. Uh, now you're chief mechanic uh, in NASCAR. Yep. How long did you do that for? So I went into NASCAR in late '93, and um, my final year was uh, right at the year 2000. So yeah, so by seven years, I guess. And, and so you earned enough to put yourself through college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It did very well. It did very well. Um, the question is that uh, so from that point, uh, you know, you work so hard. You know, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who are kind of got that same. Um, I, I don't. I don't need. It's. It's not meant in, in in a bad way at all. But jack of all trades, like put me in any situation, and I can do what is necessary in order to be able to to excel at that. That's a. It's a high compliment when it comes to uh, being being an entrepreneur, right? Uh, I can clean windows the same as I can code, right? It's just something that you do. So. Um, but mo most of them kind of don't go don't get through college because they they jump onto an idea and then they're they're just gone. Um, you put yourself through college. Did did that change what you did that put an idea in your head or what happened after you finished college? Yeah. So first of all, in going to school, um, you know, I owe it all to uh, the great people in in auto racing who were able uh, to provide me with an opportunity to not only go to school. But I didn't have the means uh, before that my family didn't to, to pay for my school. And so uh, what I was able to earn in auto racing not only put me through school, but it, it just, uh, I mean, it rocketed me into life after that with my own companies. And so, um, but I didn't want to spend four years going to college. And so uh, I studied hard uh, while working full time in auto racing. And uh, I did my four years in about two, I think it was two years and seven months and graduated number one. Um, and, and, and then when I graduated, uh, I left auto racing close to the same amount of time, um, started my own company. Uh, and like I said, it's been, uh, it's been a wild journey ever since. And somewhere in between there, um, uh, I decided to do a stint as a crime scene investigator, uh, <laughs> because I, I, I just, it, it felt like something I had to do. You always had that, that boyhood dream. Like I want to be a cop and then. When the chief of police offered me a gun and a badge, and and I just couldn't refuse, <laughs> so uh, I had to leave the tech world for a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, pick up a gun and uh, and, a, and some uh, uh, fingerprinting uh, devices, and and off I went, and I did that, and um, and then eventually, I uh, I think as we all do at some point in our life, I went back home, and home for me is uh, the island of Kauai in Hawaii. Um, and I went back home and uh, started another company there and, and on and on and, and eventually found myself here uh, back in Silicon Valley and, and uh, having a great time. Doing banjo. Um, but it, it just seems like, I mean, how many companies have you, do you think you've, do you remember how many companies you've started uh, in this period of time? So started, I mean, you know, we don't call a lemonade stand a company, I don't think. I don't know if that qualifies. Mm -hmm. But if just a real company, is that this is my fourth uh real startup taking it to into a real company where I've had a lot of employees. I mean, I've had small companies here and there. Um, but yeah, this is my fourth one. Um, my last one that I sold, um, I ended up moving to Las Vegas afterwards and, and lived there for a little bit before coming here to Silicon Valley. So 
Um, I've got a, I've also had this great life of being able to just travel everywhere. I think I've, we were looking at it last week and we counted 77 countries I've been to and um, you know, and of course with auto racing you get to go all over the, the U.S. and I follow Formula One still so I travel the world a lot um, going to a lot of those races. In fact, we just talked about how much uh, I come to Canada to watch Formula One. Uh, and so anyway, so yeah, so I think that's, that's my life in a nutshell pre-banjo. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. Now, um, why, you know, what was it about the, the mobile space that was appealing to you? I don't want to get into the, the, like what banjo is, but, um, but there's got to be some kind of draw that you kind of, like mobile popped its head up one day and you said, oh man, I got to be in that space or was it the problem that came first? So, um, well, it, for me, it was definitely the problem that came first. I mean, um, it was, there was no doubt from the moment I had that flip Nokia phone that things were going to be going uh, that way, right? I mean, I remember in, uh, when I started in auto racing in my, I think it was 90, 93, 94, I got an AOL account. I remember that being brand new. Yeah. Um, and, and since that day, I've been, you know, tinkering around whether it was coding uh, on computers or, or something else, but I've been, uh, I love the space of technology um, and phones was just as natural progression. Uh, but that's, I can't say to you, oh, I had this great idea for a mobile device. That's not, that's not how it came about. It was, I saw a problem. Um, I knew that technology could solve it. Um, the mobile phone is one way of solving it, and that's where we've come to Banjo. Um, but as we'll probably talk about, I mean, to, to me, Banjo, it's a, it's a technology company. It's not a mobile company. We use mobile phones or mobile devices um, for you to understand the technology, for you to use it to make your life better to enrich human connection, but at the end of the day, it's really about the core technology that we're building uh, that excites me, um, not just putting an app on a, on a mobile device. It's funny because, it, you know, part of the questioning is is always around, you know, what, what are the challenges of running a mobile company? And what it seems to me is that when, when I ask that question, a lot of entrepreneurs come back to me and say, well, you know, it's tough to get traction, to find customers, that, you know, the, the typical line items. But but when I read that quote, uh, um, I think it was today or yesterday, that I, it was probably today, um, that uh, that it said the core banjo is a technology. We're not an app. We use an app as a medium to get the technology out. But what we're really building is tech that other people will rely on in the location and social space. That's a pretty profound statement. I mean, you... It, just like I, I think I've only known you for 13 and a half minutes, but what I gather from you is grounded, very centered, very focused, understand what business I'm in. I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, um, but I've had enough, you've had enough experience around this to say, listen, it's very clear what business you're on. Mobile is the conduit to the customer for you. But what you're really working on is the back end stuff, the technology that's driving this. Was it a hard way to come to, or is this just inbred that you, this is how you think? Um, so it's definitely, I mean, it's how I think in order of seeing a problem and finding a solution. That's how I started all my companies. Yeah. Um, and that's how Banjo began. I mean, I was at an airport uh, on the East Coast, and a good friend of mine who I'd served in Desert Storm with was in the same airport as me. I got home to Las Vegas. Uh, I checked my social network and realized that he happened to be in the same terminal as me at the same time. If I spent two hours there together, uh, could, could have been back to back for all I know. But it frustrated me that someone who I hadn't seen in years, because he lives in Texas, I live in, in Las Vegas, and we were both in Boston, and not only in Boston, but we were really close to one another, is that fragmentation of the social networks and mobile both, it didn't allow us to be notified that one another was there. And so it was that night, literally, um, that I started programming what, what has become Banjo. I mean, it didn't begin life as Banjo, of course. Um, it began life as a, a set of ideas around technology uh, to build this connection engine, if you will, to connect humans and, and so we could interact better with one another. We didn't miss out on the important things of life. And that'll go, and we'll talk about it, go way beyond just you and I being able to meet when we're near one another. It's going to go into um, things that are important to us outside of human connection that we don't want to miss out on. And when we find out we missed out on an event, for example, we talked about... Um, uh, you're you're a Bruce Springsteen fan. I hope I didn't let anything out of the bag. There. No, but, no, people uh, know. Trust me. <laughs> um, but imagine if you had been in Boston uh, like I was, and when when Bruce uh, played with the Dropkick Murphys, and imagine as you were walking by Fenway Park when they were playing at the House of Blues, your phone said to you, "Hey, Rob, Bruce is playing over there." 
that might have been important information for you to know. And if you had gone home and you'd gone back to Ottawa and you read in your paper how he just played that night and you walked right down, yep. it would be a pretty big bummer, right? But anyway, so this, this is how Banjo came about. And, and, uh, and so to me, it was really uh, thinking about the idea of this lost human uh, connection, um, how we've become so fragmented. We're all in uh, one social network or another. And then every time I join a new social network, I got to get all my friends to join, and which right. friends join which one, and the other. I don't know. It's 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 it can be pretty overwhelming. It can, and you know, just just if I was walking down the street and Springsteen was playing in House of Blues, and it pinged me that he was playing there, um, I, I would probably first drop down in tears or faint or something like that. <laughs> Same reaction that if I had missed him when I arrived back in Ottawa. So I want to clarify that I'm I'm not proud about it, but uh, you know, I, I'm I'm honest. You know, um. So I just had to get that out. Yeah. Well. And and um, if you haven't seen any of the coverage of the, or the video on YouTube for the Dropkick uh, Murphys and Bruce Springsteen playing together uh, in this show that we're talking about, just YouTube it. Dropkick Murphys uh, used, uh, and uh, Springsteen, you'll see some great footage, shaky footage. That's my last plug. Now, so the, the it's really clear that you understand uh, what business you're in. You 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 go after a, a challenge. You're going to apply whatever technology. Like if the web was the best technology for it, you'd be building everything on the website, right? So, um, but was there ever a? This had to be the perfect convergence, right? So many social networks, so many things happening around you that that mobile was the ob obvious choice. I'm saying. So I, I did begin this. Um, I began this. Um, Sorry, I'm, I've got people in the window giving me thumbs up for some reason. I have no idea. Maybe I'm doing a good job or something. That's right. Uh, <laughs> They're so listening sorry. in. That's fine. That's right. I think it might have something to do with the product, right? <laughs> so um, in any event, this actually began uh, on the web. Uh, I didn't begin on mobile uh, when I came up with the idea. When I came home that night, I immediately went in and started programming it on the web. Um, because that's where these social networks lived, and to me, that's where the human interaction. That's where I discovered that I'd miss a friend. So that's where it must be. iOS was still uh, very new. The Android really hadn't uh, come into its own yet, uh, and uh, obviously, BlackBerry wasn't really good at connecting people with social networks, right? Um, and so, uh, as the idea matured, though, I then went on into and realized that uh, as iPhone became uh, pop, obviously very popular and widely distributed, the Android as well, and other devices. Then you started having all of these great location-based uh, technology services come out, Foursquare, Instagram, and on and on. And what that did is it just enriched, well, it, it did one thing, it fragmented more, right? Because now here's another social network i got to get on. But it started enriching the amount of information that was out there about my friends and other people I might want to hang out with and where they're at. And so it was a very natural progression to go from this idea and this about technology and move it into mobile because that's where we all live. We all are mobile, right? Yeah. I mean, many people don't even have a, a phone at home anymore except your mobile device. And so, of course, it has to be there, right? I mean, that's we might forget our wallet at home, but we're not going to forget our mobile device, not right? In your life. So exactly, and so that's why. Um, and so that's why we see Banjo's focus is about showing the technology through mobile because that's where these, these moments of you walking by and finding out that Bruce is playing with the Dropkick Murphys or me finding out that my friend from Desert Storm is, is in the same airport as me or me finding out that some other important event while I'm traveling is, is ha taking place that I want to take part in, that's only going to happen uh, right now on a mobile device. So that is the future uh, of human connection and making it more rich is using these mobile devices the technology that's already out there and bringing them together in a meaningful way. Uh, I, I love that statement, B, and I want to come right back to that. But I got to ask: um, Did you teach yourself how to program? Yeah, I, I did. Um, okay. So, I mean, just like in everything else, I mean, um, I, I'm not going to go into like all the other things that we already talked about NASCAR. But it, in those things, if you really want something badly, you just have to go out and do it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, no one's going to do it for you. So yes, I taught myself how to code. I've taught myself how to build, you know, engines. I've taught myself how to run construction companies. On and on and on. Um, but it's no different than people that I mean, um, from professional athletes. I mean, they grow up, they practice, they train for something. It's it's no different than than uh, designing and programming and coming up with an idea like banjo and execution. Right? You practice and you train your whole life. Maybe not in this one genre, but your whole life you're practicing and training. And we talked about it earlier about how 
I like to run um, companies, and especially in technology, like we did the, the racing teams, right, and the pit crews, because you're so efficient and you have to move so quickly in order to win. And, and you can't make mistakes. because you make mistakes, you either get hurt or you lose. Yeah. And none of us want to get hurt, and we don't want to lose. And so it's all about being precise, and it's about kind of constantly practicing your craft, whatever that craft may be. So you, you step away. You, you, you come home from that experience. Uh, you know, you're back in Vegas. You start, you start building this, uh, this site. Um, you build it first in the web, and then, and then eventually it moves into mobile. Talk about now, today. Like, dive right into the product a little bit. We, we've talked about a little bit about the background. There's an inference about what it does. How do people use this today? Give, you know, it, it solves the problem of being in a location um, where somebody else is that you want to connect with. Sure. What else does it do? How, how do people use it? So, um, so several. I'll give you several big use cases, um, and all very different. So one is obviously. The reason I can uh, I did it was because of the connection engine that I was going to build. Yeah. I didn't want to miss out any more on important people that were near me as I traveled through life uh, without having an opportunity to connect. Um, and so that's what it does. So as I'm here in Redwood City right now, or if I travel to New York, Banjo is always looking out for all of my friends across all of my social graph, right? My Twitter friends, my Facebook friends, this big fragmentation. And when they're doing something near me, it's letting me know, hey, you and your friend are near one another. So that's that's huge. And we hear about that, I mean, um, I don't want to say dozens of times every day, but it's it feels that way. We hear all these great stories about family members, you know, that might be cousins or an uncle or uh, these these college roommates or people who used to play sports together or traveling, even abroad, and they happen to be in the same place as one another. And who would have known? But Banjo told them and created that opportunity. Outside of that, a lot of other cool ways banjo is being used, uh, big sporting events or concerts. We all can't be at the Super Bowl um, in Indianapolis this year, but with banjo, banjo lets you go to the Super Bowl. It lets you be right there. It lets you not only experience the people that are tweeting out something, but the people that are sharing photographs, the people that are checking in, talking on, on Facebook, and it allows you to engage right there in the moment. And media and the news has been using it to report on events and stories when they can't be there. Uh, whether it's a weather event, uh, whether it's, uh, I saw something in the paper outside of Philadelphia that the reporters were using it, there was a bomb scare at the mall and they want to talk to people at the mall while it was happening. They used Banjo, went to the mall, saw all the different people on social networks that were there, used Banjo to connect with all these people and they were able to break the story before the police even came out with it. So. Um, banjo is used in, in, in all these different ways, but the, the core of it, if we get back to it, it's about this connection engine, right? It's about us not missing out on the things that are important to us. And so even though these scenarios are very different, if you will, um, it all does circle back to that. And, and that's, the, that's the core value of what we're doing. And it's, it's pretty much every uh, social network that it connects into. Like that, that's, that's the crux of it. It brings one termination point for all these social networks? That, that's right. So, I mean, I, it's, we don't obviously have every social network. We have a lot of social networks. and Because there's the like 180 network. of them that went out of business in December, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, but the cool thing about Banjo is about the technology that's been built and how quickly we can add in these social networks. So, for example, I think today we've had something like 15 new social networks that have been suggested to us just today from launch just today. that we don't have in there and says, hey, it'd be great if you would connect this one and this one. And I know three of them went up on the board already of something that we plan we'll have in probably in the next 30 days. Because with Banjo, we've made it easy to connect, like, like you need spokes on a wheel and all of these different things that are happening out there. Actually, I explain it like a spider web. If you think about it, if this was a, one social network and this is another, and they cross. And sometimes you see, like on Twitter, you'll see this tweet from, out of your Foursquare check-in or on Facebook, something you shared from a picture from Instagram, and they cross. But like a spider web, there's all of these gaps. Banjo fills in all those gaps and connects everything. Uh, and so that's the that's the main idea. So, uh, but I've got to, when you start to think about the, the ramifications or the, the things that you can start to do with this stuff, it all comes down to, um, which is what I love, it all comes down to the technology that you're building, the, the back end, the piece of technology that sits on the server that feeds that uh, the dumb screen, right? Um, yep. So you went out and uh, I read, it, I, I, I wish I remember where I read it, Betakit, where you hired, or it was the, the uh, Fast Company article, you hired uh, a PhD who worked on the Netflix algorithm? Yeah, that's right. Um, so 
We we did. We we have some really amazing people here. I mean, not just Jan, but some really amazing engineers that we've uh, been able to hire since launch because they've been captivated by uh, not only the idea of Banjo, but truly the technology that we're building here. And so we were able to get someone like Jan, um, who is a PhD in artificial intelligence, to to leave a company like Netflix. Uh, we have people here from Google. We have people here. Um, from the director of engineering from Second Life's uh, social web services that that's here now. So a lot of really great engineers and talent. In fact, you know that we're, that's what we're proud of most is that this is a company of people doing engineering of building technology, uh, and through that we've been able to get these these remarkable talents to come together and to all march behind this idea that we're going to build this connection engine uh, technology that people are going to build on top of. Right? That this is going to be what helps people in the location and social and mobile space build their ideas, their dreams, the things that they want to do. This is what's going to make it happen. So, I, I mean, you, you're, you're a small startup, a young startup, uh, version two. And, um, and is that what it is? You're, you're selling the vision right now about what this can be and, and, uh, and people are jumping on to this like they, like they have been. You're, you're, you're extracting people from some of these big companies where you would, you would think that people are clamoring to get into. Uh, what, there's got to be much more of an appeal for, to work with something like Banjo. So it, it, it's a big idea, right? I mean, first of all, um, they come into this knowing, first of all, that it's not an app, right? They come into this knowing that it is a big idea. They come to it knowing what we want to solve. Just like with Friend Alerts, this isn't another social network where you have to invite someone and they have to also be a member of Banjo. What makes this so special is that once I join it, I've already belonged to Facebook and to Twitter and to Instagram and to Foursquare. All those friends out there that are, that are on those other social networks and fragmented, they don't all have to come in and be part of Banjo, but yet Banjo lets me know when those are things that are important are nearby. And so it's that type of technology I mean, we've already, and you said we're young, we're six or seven months old now, I think. Um, and in that seven months, I mean, we've processed, I think, 1.1 1 .1, uh, billion updates uh, already. Um, you know, we have created 50 million plus connections already, and, and obviously that's just growing exponentially now. But um, it's really, if you think about it, it's not just uh, having people join a social network and then saying, oh, uh, you have this device, you have this device, you're both on the social network, you've both done some action and now you get alerted. That's a lot of steps. Uh, and is. so we want to solve it so you don't have to do any steps. I don't want you to have to take the device out of your pocket to get value. I want you to feel a buzz, you bring it out, and next thing you know, it's like there's the value, it's staring at you, you've had to do nothing. And why? Because that's what I want, right? I want my phone to tell me what to do. I'm tired of punching into it. What, you know, trying to find search for this, search for that. I don't want to do that anymore, right? So, and, and, and so I use that same passion and enthusiasm to make sure that other people in the future don't have to do those things. What do you, what do you learn from all that data, all those uh, pieces of social interaction, those, you know, over a billion different uh, uh, data points, I would say. What, what, can, what do you learn from that stuff? So you, you learn who the influencers are. I mean, that's number one, right? You, you definitely can tell... Um, like which person in the group, right, can say something or do something, action, and rally people behind them to go to a football game or to go to a movie. You can also, you learn about what people really like to do. And, and what people love to do is they love to consume, right? We all love to consume, and they like to consume visually. So when people see rich content, like photos from Instagram, for example, you see how much you learn how much time they like to spend looking at those photographs or saving and sharing those with their friends. And so you learn a lot about human interaction. Uh, you learn about what people like to do. You learn um, patterns of people when they travel uh, and when they travel outside of their normal area, you know, how far they'll actually go from uh, a city center. You, there's actually so much. I mean, it's, it's the data, if you can imagine, if you think about it, over a billion updates from all these different social networks and all, each one of them doing different things and people having different interests there's so much you can learn about people but the, at the end of the day what we're learning is we're learning from people how to better give them the results that they want when they want it without them having to do anything to get it because the information already exists out there so why should I have to give you anything else 
it's so true. I mean, simplicity. You know, some of the comments that I read about uh, version 2.0 versus version 1.0 is a refinement of the UI and the UX experience, like the UX. And, and uh, that's got to be something that, you know, from this is very app focused. But, but my guess is that uh, you, can, you can do all the work that you want to on the back end. You can create the greatest algorithm. You can tweak it so that it, you know, it distills the, the most important information and relevant information to where you're standing and what you're interested in. But if you can't access it effectively, you, if the UI or the UX is broken, it doesn't matter how much effort you put into the back end. Talk about that, the balance between back and front end for you guys as you built this out. So, uh, again, if it's all going to all be about the human interaction, right, human connection, it does have to be about how we are going to consume this. And so in version one, uh, it was about moving fast, right? It was right. about me coming to Silicon Valley with an idea building it out, seeing if the world even liked this idea, was it a good idea? And once we realized it was, it was then about bringing in what I call the professionals to do it. <laughs> so you gotta hire people that are better than yourself, yeah. right? And so in version one, I did a lot of the design myself, but I can assure you in version two, we were super lucky to get a really, really good uh, UX designer who had done some great things at companies like Aardvark and Adobe. Um, and he's come in here and just made the world a difference. and, and um, and so the users of our app have a debt of gratitude to owe to him. But also it's through the uh, user testing we do. We do a tremendous amount uh, of user testing. In fact, when it started back in, in Boston last year. In fact, right around St. Patrick's Day, I started actually testing a lot of the idea there um, with people. And, and, and I'm talking about in focus groups. And we did focus groups um, in hotel lobbies where we'd get 30 people together or we do it in, in uh, Irish pubs. We actually did it at a Patriots Jets Monday night football game, um, I think with 200 and some people. And I said to date we've had uh, over 6,000 people in person that we brought in and tested with different ideas. Um, and this is how version two came about, right? I mean, version two, it's, if, if we're a technology company, then we gotta live and, and breathe and die by the technology. And what that is, is the information we learn from you, the user, when you don't like something and we've spent you know, let's say 80 hours just sweating over this thing and the user doesn't like it, if we can't improve it, then we get rid of it. Right. We don't get emotional about it. It's gone. And so version one to version two, why you saw that happen so quickly is we had gotten so many users already, at over a half a million at that point. We had learned a lot. There was no sense of saying, well, let's wait till we get to a million and then take out this stuff. No, users didn't like this stuff. It's out of there. Then users told us, hey, we'd like to have more friend alerts. We'd like to get notified of, in these kind of cases instead. I'd like to be able to search for my interests when I go anywhere in the world, not just where I'm at now. And so because of that, we built it and we, and we put it out there. And, and Rodrigo, our, our UX guy, um, did an amazing job. So now you can, you can use it and it's so simple and so fast. But don't be mistaken for that simplicity and how fat, lightning fast it is to use at, at the technology that's under the hood that drives that. Oh yeah, you, you know it's very complicated to get simple, right? And and uh, and we see that. I mean, Apple did it. The simplicity is the key to the success right now, right? It, it's 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 very difficult to get to that point. Um, what about what about um, like protecting this? You know, do you have do you do you wrap patents around this stuff? Or are you working at such a pace that listen, we're, we're going to get this out as quickly as we can into as many people's hands, and and uh, and we'll worry about that later. So it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. Um, sure, we filed for several patents, um, I, and I had filed for some uh, long ago, actually, in, in the space when I came up with the idea. So, of course, that's important um, from a broad-level uh, technology, high-level technology idea. But we are also a company that's very proud of the open-source technology that we do use. Um, I mean, this past year, 2011, we won the 2011 um, Ruby Innovator Award from Matt's, who invented the Ruby language. And Ruby and, and using Rails, it's all about open source and building mm -hmm. things and sharing them with the community. Our algorithms, though, the things that define the technology, the things that, for example, we're building to make it so that you get different types of alerts when they're important to you, of course, those are patentable, or those are things that we that we might not share broadly outside of Banjo, but other things that have made our lives easier by figuring out how to do something on the iPhone. In fact, one of our, our, our new iOS engineers just built a really cool library and we're gonna uh, open source it because it's gonna make everybody who does iOS, uh, who does any kind of social network on it, their lives so much easier. It's just something we wanna share back. So 
And like I said, it's a little bit of a double-edged sword. There's obviously some things that give you a competitive advantage. For me, it's our team and, and the early technology that we, we did in the beginning and how that's continued to grow. So, of course, we're not going to give that away. But the other things that have made our lives better um, in engineering, we want to share that back to the community because it's in our best interests to have other social networks and other location-based services, applications come out because that just it makes everything richer so that we get more, more people to come in and, and, and share their you know, social and location. And that, that information is going to make it so that you get the type of notifications that you want to get when you get them. If we became a society where we only have one or two social networks and that's it, uh, it, it would be pretty tough to do what we're doing. It's a pretty bad situation at that point anyways. Too much power con concentrated in, in one, I don't know, one F logo. Uh, that's a lot of people. 800 million is a lot of people to be, to be, uh, to have one in one network. Uh, last, last question about the product. I mean, uh, you know, okay. we could probably spend uh, hours on the product, but, uh, but I, I definitely want to talk about uh, a few things around going forward. But, um, w when it comes to the way the product is today, how close is this to the vision that you had? You know, I know it's it hasn't been that long ago, but how close is this the implementation of version two, and how or or how far off do you think you have to get to? So we're about twenty. If I put in percentage, we're twenty percent of the way there of the original vision. I mean, I remember part of the vision was I came home and I was disappointed because I didn't have that connection uh, with my friend that was in the same airport. We've solved a lot of that with our type of friend alerts. The fact that I don't have to have my friends belong all to my same social network, and yet. I still get this notification. So, but we're continuing to make it better every day. So that's, although friend alerts accomplished, uh, we're not to where we want to be with it yet. But again, Banjo is much bigger about that. We talked about it's not just about the friend alerts. It's about the phone, our devices telling us what's important ar around us all the time in our life, regardless if you're sitting in Ottawa or that you fly to New York tomorrow. As you fly, things change in your life. Your interests change. Things that you want to do change, you, the, your, your travel patterns change, and because of that, you know, the, the smarts, the intelligence around the technology has to change. And so that's not something you're going to build overnight. Sure, you can make it look pretty in, in an application and you can give it to people uh, to use, but th at the end of the day, it's about us learning. And so that's why we put in several things inside of Banjo for us to really learn from the user. They're not meant to have been there long term. If the users love them, they might stay in there long term, but they're really meant to just learn, right? Oh, we put in more photos. The users like to engage more with photos, right? Sounds like a no brainer, but you have to prove what they like to do with photos, you know? You have to prove how they like to communicate with other people. You have to prove that when they do get a notification that a friend's nearby, do they open it up right away? How much time do they spend in their application? I mean, that was something that was amazing to me is that. When people get a notification from Banjo and they come back in, they spend, on average, more than five minutes each session in back inside the Banjo just discovering outside of that notification they got. So it's things like that that, uh, that I can't say that we're really anywhere near where the, where the vision was day one, which was to solve the problem where my phone tells me everything. And, and uh, although Siri from Apple started, has done a pretty good job at starting to talk to me about stuff, uh, it's certainly not telling me everything I need to know when I need to know it because I still have to ask the question. I don't want to have to ask the question again. Well, that begs that begs the question is what happens when voice, you know, Mary Meeker calls this the ear of the ear. Uh, certainly Siri has, uh, has awakened this um, slumbering industry because it's certainly been around for forever, as long as I can remember back when Microsoft was trying to tackle it and, and certainly Nuance has been doing this. But what happens with that? This must obviously, what you're doing is a perfect I mean, voice is a perfect extension uh, for what you guys are doing so that it's audible uh, response in a car, for example, as opposed to uh, a buzz and a beep and a, and a message, right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, again, by talking to something, it's a lot easier than probably uh, typing something. Sure, except for my um, kids. They don't, they don't respond anyways, <laughs> right? But yes, sorry. But I, I, I think it goes beyond that as we, as we look to the future. If this is the year uh, of that or this is the couple of years,